It's good to see you again. I hope you had a great week. This is Shane from Shane's Books and Review, and it's Friday, so let's talk about Wendy's Button Box, wrote by Stephen King and co-wrote by Richard Shizmar. I think I've said his name differently every single time. So Wendy's Button Box, it's a little bit different. Long of it all is this. Because I got to listen to it on Audible, there was a thing that I got, which was Richard and Stephen talking to one another, I'm guessing via phone. The audio quality on that wasn't all that great. For telephone phone calls, you know, it is what it is. But it gave me a couple of insights to the book that I wouldn't have had originally. And that being that Stephen King had started this story and couldn't finish it in his own words and so he ended up sending the entire manuscript to Richard and said do whatever you will with it and Richard finished it now it doesn't say where Richard took over I'd be curious to know where you guys and gals think that maybe it was took over by him mainly because I've got a pretty good idea I know where it happened the writing styles are unique to each other of course but whenever something is done well and collabed well it's really hard to tell the difference now that being said we shan't talk about <laughs> <laughs> Beauty between Stephen King and his son. Yeah, that was certainly not one of my favorite collabs ever. Gwendy's Button Box, it starts, I believe, in the 70s, uh, like 1974, and we're following, of course, Gwendy. And Gwendy is kind of like me. She's a little bit bigger, and she's tired of people making fun of her, so she starts running these stairs called the Suicide Stairs, which will come back later on in the story. She is simply trying to get herself a little bit more fit, and one morning while she's running these stairs, she runs into a guy on the top of the stairs that's sitting on a park bench. It sets this tone in the very beginning of the book of, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be so comfortable, because this guy's like, hey, little girl, come here, sit next to me. Let's have a palaver. Let's, let's have a chat. Let's let's talk. These days, if something like that were to happen, kid would, of course, be taught to scream and run. In the 70s and 80s, things were just a little bit different. I don't know if it's because of news media and because of people getting, well, recognized for their bad deeds, that more people that are going to have tendency to do those bad deeds are more enabled. There's there's a big conversation that should be had about that, really. And then, like I was saying, in the 70s and 80s, it was a little bit different in that sometimes those things did happen. I remember whenever I was a kid not fearing talking to an adult, as long as my mom or dad was in sight. It was a better place because now, I mean, even with my own kids, I'm like, hey, you got to be careful. Unless I tell you, I know this person, don't just go up to them and start talking. So when he does actually, after a little bit of dialogue back and forth, sit down and talk to this gentleman that's wearing a black coat and a black hat. Stephen King does continue in his tradition of RF. The guy's name is Richard Ferris. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I don't know. But as soon as I saw that he was wearing black and his initials were RF, I was like, oh great, this is going to be the bad guy of the story. Well, it's not really let loose if this person is a good guy or a bad guy. In some ways, I see him being kind of a baddie because of the way that he interacts with her whenever she's talking about this gift that he gives her, which is, of course, the button box. It's not a box full of buttons you would put onto things, but rather it's a box of buttons that you push and a couple of levers. One lever gives you these little coins that are worth a lot of money. One lever gives you this magic chocolate that makes you only want to eat what you need to eat. Gwendy herself thinks that there might be a little bit more to it because whenever she starts eating these chocolates, then it seems like her mind's a little bit sharper. Indeed, she is losing weight. It's like she's just better all the way around. But what I mean by maybe he might not be such a good person is simply that whenever she's asking him about the buttons and what they do, it's the laugh, the smile, the way that he says, why ask about what you already know? And that she feels like if she pushes one of the buttons, it would destroy a country. And it doesn't really get into that so much. There are a couple of examples of her pushing the buttons during the story and the effects that those buttons have on her whenever she does push them. It doesn't say that she was directly responsible for the death and destruction of this or an entire continent, etc. Now that little box that she was given, it goes to some unique places. And what I mean is she hides it underneath a tree or in a closet or these sorts of things and she starts to have nightmares about her childhood bully getting a hold of the box but we do get to follow her from her entering into middle school all the way and bleed through high school as previously mentioned it's unique to see the things that that box changed for her it seems like maybe it made her family life better her mom and dad stopped drinking etc the thought experiment for me is more of a question of one why give such a young person a box like that and the second part of that is is it because of wanting chaos because children Children, let's face it, they're not the most rooted individuals on the face of the planet. Sometimes their emotions can be completely untoward and biased, and they can also be very explosive. Even if your kids are really well 
well-adjusted individual, there's going to be that occasional rah-rah. If you got kids, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, long of it all is, is that a box that's been given to children for a long period of time? If they don't use it, it helps them. Or if they do use it, it hurts them. That really wasn't developed or talked about in the story. So that's a kind of an interesting question to ask about it. The secondary thing is, what happens whenever a kid has a really bad day and he wants to burn the world or she wants to burn the world and she pushes all the buttons plus the black one? Is this the reason why this character that seems to be a good person in a way might actually be a bad guy? Is that the reason why he's giving it to children? Because adults, they would probably be so afraid to push the buttons on the box have just the complete lack of care and do it anyway just to find out. Whereas children in their infinite imaginations could come up with all kinds of scenarios and does the box just do what those little imaginations comes up with? It's interesting. There was a thing that happened where she did push one of the buttons and it got rid of a person and I'm not going to tell you about that situation. It's an interesting little experiment of what would you do? Which kind of reminded me of a movie that I've seen before. If you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. This story started in Castle Rock and the first one that we talked about, Elevation, that one was also in Castle Rock. And the same thing with the one about the dog. Maybe there's a thing, not a it, but maybe a thing or something that Stephen King is going to work up to on this. So I really look forward to seeing what's going to else come out of Castle Rock or if this is just kind of like a little side thing that he does ever so often. Favorite scene out of the book. It had to be when Wendy took some of these JP Morgan coins that were in non-circulated condition that comes out of the box with the lever that she pulls and she was trying to sell them. And she ends up meeting this old guy at this booth and the old guy at the booth, he felt like he was not doing her justice and didn't really want to buy them and try to talk her out of it, but eventually agreed. And when she was leaving, there was this interesting little point where he just happened to be outside and there was these hooligans that were giving her a hard time. The old guy walks up to him, you know, tells her to go on, and they're like, well, it's two on one old man, we're gonna take you, and he pulls out a knife that has Semper Fi on it, which is the only Latin that those two kids know. That was quoted from the book, by the way. Yeah, yeah, so they take off, but that was probably one of my more favorite scenes in the book, really. Always respect your elders. I think that that old man would have cleaned both of their clocks. It amuses me in a way. But anyway, so it was an interesting little story from both Richard and from Stephen, and I enjoyed it. Would I recommend this book to you guys and gals and all that? I don't know if I would. I mean, it's not a tremendously you got to read it kind of a book, but occasionally whenever a person gets in the mood for a book that is different and unique, this might actually fit that. It wouldn't be a daily driver for me is what I'm getting at, but... I do know that eventually I'll come back and read this one again. And for that reason, I would say if you like things that are kind of psychological or something that makes you think a little bit, that's probably a better way of putting it. Then, yeah, the second story that was in this little bundle, <laughs> what an interesting thing. That was um, unexpected. It's called The Music Room. And yeah, yeah, that's that's a jolly little tell for Christmas time, let me tell you. Anyway, it's a very super short story. <laughs> if you happen to get it whenever you get Wendy's button box, it was definitely a unexpected surprise. I read it, it made me think, God, that's horrible. But I enjoyed it while I read it. And because it's so short, I mean, if I tell you any more than the couple's name, which is the Enderbees, which may or may not be waiting for something to happen, I'd probably give too much away. So that's, that's all I'm gonna tell you about it. It was an ideal short story. Maybe not so much ideal for some of the people, but it was ideal. With that being said, I'm glad to see that you guys made it through. And this is the part where I'm going to ask you to leave me some comments down there in that comment section, because I'd love to know what you think about it, if you've read it, if you plan to read it, or if no way. That doesn't sound like something I want. But I'm, I'm curious to know why. Remember, non-judgment zone. Even if there are other trolls, I won't troll you. Like, share, subscribe. This is Shane with Shane's Books and Review. Today our book was Gwendy's Button Box and... The Music Room, two short stories by Stephen King and Richard Chismar. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you Ooh. Monday.